myself is not familiar with Nagoya at all. So I didn't have any idea on what sort of thing I should do here. But my wife is from Nagoya, so she often talks about Nagoya. So I asked her if she have some idea about Chojamachi town, and that is a textile town that she said. So I collected some information and I did some research of the Choyamachi and I came up with a story before I actually created my artwork. At the exhibition in 2013 at Maebayashi, I created another story. And Maebayashi is also a textile town. In the process of modernization of Japan, this town developed through textile production. So when I first heard about this project of having exhibition in this textile town, it so happened that very small town that I live, there is a very small town next to my a town. There is a Japanese gang living there, and when he was 20, he lived in Nagoya, according to a history book. So Nagoya and the small town I live have a lot of connections. That's what I learned from my research. So I wanted to dig down deeper to come up with some ideas on my work. So that's how I came up with the Choja Machi story, which is in my artwork. One thing I wanted to do in my project is to reflect the history or the people living there on my artwork, how they lived or what they did. I wanted to reflect on all those things that people did. So that's how I came up with this my artwork. In the last page of the book, it says this is a fiction based on the real history. The actual history is 70% of this story and remaining 30% is out of my own imagination. Again, what I wanted to do is to look back on the history or to have another look of the history. That's what I did in my project. More specifically, Chojamachi town is a town of textile, and there is a wholesaler which was called Tsurukame shop. So this is my own, out of my own imagination, but I created a log of this shop, and that log is exhibited in the museum. And this is the time starts from Edo period, that's about 200 years ago, and the story lasts until the end of the uh, Second World War II. So this is the fast forward of the Japanese history from the Edo period, that is 200 years ago, to modern time. And in this story, I described how the textile town was developed through the history. So if you could imagine, if you can extend your imagination on what has happened in Choja Machi town. And at the exhibition hall, I have, uh, there are some key players in the story, and the main player is Goto Shinpei. When he was 20, he visited Nagoya, and when he was 24, uh, he stayed in the hospital from uh, 20 and 24, and he had a very good um, political skill. So he was first just a doctor, but he became a director of the hospital later on. So that's Goto Shinpei in my story, a key player. So he plays a key role in the story, and Osugi Sakai and other players are there, and they develop connections between each other. In this exhibition hall, I've got some letters exhibited. And those are the letters that I myself wrote out of my imagination. I imagined their feelings and wrote their letters on their behalf. I imagined the feeling of the wife of Goto Shinpei and other players. So I wrote a lot of letters. He actually got some uh, money from Tsuru to go abroad to study. So I uh, wrote letters 
out of my imagination to Tsuru asking for money. So I used a lot of imagination in creating this story. And at the last part of the story, I um, created a letter from Oka Shume. That's the letter written after the World War II. Japanese soldiers advanced their troops to Manchuria and Siberia. The reason why Japanese started the textile companies is that they wanted to manufacture the soldiers' clothes and soldier uniforms. So in my story as well, I describe soldiers who advanced their troops to Siberia and Manchuria. So in my story, as well, media's soldier uniforms provided for those soldiers, and that's, again, out of my imagination. And um, maybe people in Nagoya know this, but at the seventh year of Nago uh, Meiji, the Nagoya Expo was held, and golden um, roof ornament was exhibited. And that's, again, an historical fact. Mr. Ito of Nagoya, he's a founder of Matsuzakaya department store. He collected, uh, he asked for money from rich people in Nagoya and created a golden roof ornament, which has the shape of a fish. And in this story, as this person um, becomes successful in his business, he came up with an idea of creating silver version roof ornament. Japanese castles have a pair of golden fish, but in Nagoya, he thought that it may be a good idea to have a pair of silver ornament and gold golden ornament, but the people in Nagoya didn't like the idea, so he became upset. And then, so in order to show his angriness, he exhibited the silver ornamentation. However, this uh, ornament was confiscated by the Japanese Imperial Army later on. So this is the uh, silver fish in exhibition. This is the owner of the fifth generation uh, today, the descendant of this person is still running the uh, the shop because most of the wholesalers in the textile town, of course, they deal with the textiles, but they have other different businesses to make money, like they have businesses like um, real estate. They've been pretty much diversified to develop their companies and sustain their companies. In that sense, Tsurukame wholesaler has diversified their business. And the youngest owner, the fifth generation owner, happens to be an art collector as well in my book. And at the start of this book, there is a writer in the book. So that's actually depicting myself. So in my story, my artwork is bought by this collector. So that's how the story goes. Some part of the story is out of the historical facts, and other parts are out of my own imagination. So my story is about looking back on what has happened in Chojamachi town, or to utilize my own imagination to reflect on what has happened in this town.